When New Zealand was colonised by European settlers in the 1840s, railways were already well established in many parts of the world, but it was not until the early 1860s that the first railways in New Zealand were contemplated. The first steam passenger railway was opened at Christchurch in December of 1863. Wellington's first railway from Pipitia Point to Lower Hutt opened in 1874 as part of a planned main trunk railway stretching from Wellington to Auckland. The route north through the Hutt Valley and the Wairarapa was chosen because of the relatively easy construction over most of the rich pasture lands of the Wairarapa. The main obstacle was the Rimutaka Range between Upper Hutt and Featherstone. In 1878, a line was opened between these two towns and included the renowned Rimutaka Incline. This three-mile section took the railway from an altitude of 1,141 feet at its summit down to 272 feet at Cross Creek, the railway township created to house and service the six small tank engines used on the hill section, working grades as steep as 1 and 13. These locomotives, imported from Britain, had additional engines inside the frames to grip on a centre rail to provide more adhesion. Masterton was reached in 1880, and by December 1897, the final section of line from Mangatanoka to Woodville was opened. This met with the Palmerston North to Napier line. So, finally, the government had its through railway to the Manawatu to link up with the already constructed lines to Foxton and New Plymouth. This was, however, eclipsed by a direct west coast line from Wellington to Longburn, built by the Wellington and Manawatu Railway Company and opened in 1886. The line was eventually taken over by the government in 1908 following the completion of the railway from Martin to Auckland. The land around the northern Wairarapa was covered in dense native bush, and many people were engaged in the timber milling industry, fueled by an increasing need for timber in the growing city of Wellington. A short railway was established between Newman and Niriaha, a distance of around 11 kilometres, to transport felled logs to a sawmill established near the Newman railway station. Built using light iron rails, it was very modern for its time and utilised a small steam engine built by Aveling and Porter, better known for producing traction engines and steamrollers. The settlers had formed the town of Payatua on the eastern side of the Mangatanoka River after the government had decided that the town should be built at Mangamutu. Around this time, the railway planners were commencing surveys for a route and decided to take the more westerly route to avoid flood-prone land and having to bridge the Mangatanoka River twice. Paiutua was surveyed prior to the railway route being decided and so provision was made for the railway to take a route through the town and the planners allowed the wide strip through its centre for this purpose. From the outset, Paiutua was provided with quite a substantial railway station, goods shed and yard, including stockyards and loading ramps to handle cattle, sheep, horses and pigs. There was also a turntable at the north end of the yard, several water tanks for the steam engines and a large hand-operated crane. Among the first locomotives employed to run on this line were the Rogers K-Class. They were imported from the United States in 1878 and initially worked trains in the South Island. They were later replaced by N-Class engines, also first used in the South Island. In 1936, when the wire wrapper rail cars commenced operation over the Limutaka Incline, some services were run right through to Woodville. 
After 1948, when the last steam-hauled passenger trains on the line ceased, the Wairarapa rail cars took over all passenger services. The opening of the 8km Rimataka Railway Tunnel and the closing of the Rimataka Incline in 1955 resulted in the Wairarapa having the first fully dieselised railway line in New Zealand. The effect of this dramatically changed operations on the Wairarapa line, including conditions at the Paiotua station. Articulated Drury twin-set railcars took over the passenger traffic and the journey to Wellington was reduced by over an hour. A new era of railway operation in the Wairarapa was about to begin. The 1950s and 60s were probably the busiest years for the Paiotua railway station. The New Zealand economy was booming, and the start of aerial top dressing on farms resulted in thousands of tonnes of bulk superphosphate arriving by rail. Goods and passenger traffic were at their highest volumes and it was normal to have over 50 wagons in the yard. Each morning a large fleet of trucks descended on the station to spend the day loading and unloading freight. The station staff peaked at 10 during this time and with the opening of the Rimataka Tunnel, the Paiutua Railway Yard Loop Line was extended to take much longer trains. Napier to Wellington freight trains were diverted from the Wellington to Palmerston North route to go via the Wairarapa. And for some 10 years, more than 10 freight and six passenger trains stopped at the station each day. In 1971, a new station building was constructed, replacing the first one opened in 1897. It was opened on the 31st of March, 1971, by the then Prime Minister, Sir Keith Holyoke whose birthplace was around 200 metres from the station. Sir Keith unveiled a plaque commemorating the occasion in front of local dignitaries and a large representative gathering of local town and country people. From around 1980, railway freight and passenger traffic declined as roads and trucks improved and as private cars became more available. In March of 1988, the station was closed and for a time it looked as if it would be demolished, the railway yard ripped up and no trace of the once industrious area left. Fortunately, a large dairy factory had been built adjoining the railway line just to the north of the station in the mid-1970s and a private siding was installed. Other rail traffic through the station to and from Napier and the formation of the Paiutua Rail Car Society in 1992 influenced the decision to retain both the station building and railway yard. The current president and one of the two founders of the Paiutua Rail Car Society, Don Selby, worked as a clerical cadet at the Paiutua station and well remembers some of the activities that took place on a daily basis. Well, I started at the uh, prior to a railway station on the 3rd of January 1956. We had a staff of 10 when I started. The station master, two shift clerks, three traffic assistants, uh, who were also really shunters, um, a junior porter and um, a storeman in the shed. Uh, the, we had at that stage, um, the Unataka Tunnel had just opened in late 1955 and uh, we had uh, 10 goods trains a day through and uh, six rail car services. On Fridays they, we actually had eight services because there was an extra two services on Fridays. The, the railway station was a pretty interesting place to work uh, because we, um, we always had a, a lot of goods traffic going through and it was not unusual for up to 40 or 50 wagons to be in the yard any day and it was a very busy place because um, all the road carriers came here and uh, every piece of goods that came into the um, area practically was distributed from the station. Uh, the the Wairapa line was um, in theory completely dieselised from November 1955 when the Rimataka Tunnel opened. The main locomotives um, 
from that time on, on the mainline service was the then brand new DG class who were all practically commissioned on the line. They were supported by some of the DE class heavy shunting locomotives which had been introduced for uh, Auckland and Wellington suburban services. And of course we had the, um, the brand new um, uh, 88 seater articulated Drury twin set rail cars for passenger services. The, uh, the line of course was not really completely de dieselised, um, that was all good for our morale and meant for the public consumption. But, uh, it was practically dieselised, but we do, did still have some um, some shunting services with steam engines and Woodville Loco Depot maintained a small stable of AB steam locomotives right up until um, well, when I left in 1958. Um, they, were, they were getting fairly rare by then, but I believe they did continue right into the 1960s. As far as freight traffic went, uh, the station was really busy. Uh, we handled a, a huge variety. Uh, inwards mostly fertiliser, coal, timber, uh, power poles, field tiles, steel, motor cars, tractors and other machinery and a host of general goods which arrived generally in, um, in uh, what they used to call various wagons with a whole lot of different consignees and they were unloaded. Um, we also of course we had quite a lot of livestock arriving um, because Paiatu is a fattening area and the um, livestock was purchased at sales elsewhere, places like Matawhiro, Stortford Lodge in Hastings, uh, Danny Burke, and Ford Hill, places like that. And it would come in and be unloaded here and go off to farms for fattening. Um, on the outward side, um, probably livestock was our biggest traffic. Uh, dairy products, cheese in particular. Uh, wool was very big in the season. And um, quite a lot of uh, other general items went out. Um, and there was a certain amount of manufactured goods, there was a small amount of industry here. Perhaps the, um, the, the most unusual item that went out was um, soft drinks, cordials. Um, local firm here, Kiwi Cordials Limited, held the Railways Refreshment Room contract and there was large quantities of um, soft drink went out. That was all on service free traffic which meant that it wasn't paid for but it was accounted for. And uh, inwards of course back would come the um, crates of empty bottles. So. Um, Probably the more interesting one of the lot would have been livestock and uh, it wasn't uncommon for us to load out um, 20 or more um, wagons of livestock per day uh, and they went to all sorts of um, destinations but mostly the freezing works from here. All of these experiences added to Don's great love of railways which still endures to this day. I don't think um, I would have ever have, uh, believed in those days that one day I would end up leading a team which would um, take over the Paiuta railway station and uh, convert it into a heritage facility and um, import here um, examples of three different types of rail cars, several shunning locomotives, about 20 wagons and basically um, uh, ensure that the railway yard here um, continued. Uh, nor that I would um, perhaps one day become part owner in, in a DG diesel locomotive, two DEs and a um, Drury TR shunting locomotive and a couple of jiggers and several other things. So um, all in all, it's been a great experience and I still have the privilege in going towards my retirement of being able to spend time at the railway station every day, which is really enjoyable. Built in 1897, the Paiutua Railway Goods Shed has seen its fair share of steam trains rolling over the nearby track. These have now become something of a rarity, as only occasional excursions visit the remote northern Wairarapa town. Passenger trains were once a regular sight, initially hauled by steam engines, then diesel rail cars, transporting local folk north through Woodville and south to Masterton and Wellington. 
Now, only an infrequent number of freight trains pass through on their way to and from the Hawke's Bay. In addition, during the busy summer milking season, the nearby milk powder factory also sees a daily train. Most of the small country stations along this line have long since disappeared, but Payatua is one that has been saved this fate by a group of dedicated locals. The Payatua station, rebuilt in 1971, was an important part in the railway link until the old automatic tablet train control system was discontinued. Payatua was fortunate as freight traffic was sufficient to justify its retention. However, it was finally closed in 1988 and gradually fell into disrepair. During 1992, a group of local railway enthusiasts decided that they would like to restore RM5, an old wire wrapper rail car. This had been in storage at the Silver Stream Railway Museum in a derelict state for a number of years. Following a lease arrangement being agreed with the museum, permission was sought to utilize the then empty Payatua railway goods shed. In September 1992, the rail car was transported by road to its new home and restoration was commenced by a small band of volunteers. The Payatua Rail Car Society, as the group is now called, has expanded with many members coming from outside of the area. In addition to the Waira Rapper Rail Car, the Society has leased a standard class rail car, RM31 Tokumaru, once often seen in the area. This is being prepared to once again carry passengers on the main railway lines around New Zealand. A separate group of enthusiasts has purchased and is restoring RM133, the last complete Drury rail car set remaining in New Zealand. In the late 1970s, this rail car had its engines removed and was converted to an AC class carriage along with many of its brethren. It escaped the gas cutting torch, fate suffered by almost all of the class by being used for evacuation training at the Auckland International Airport. It was set on fire just prior to being transported to Payatua and one end of the articulated set was severely damaged. A second Drury rail car also survived, with one end serving as a motel unit near the Waitomo Caves in the Waikato. The other end, the same as the damaged end of RM133, was eventually located in a quarry near Kerikeri in Northland and after being purchased, was moved by road to the Payatua site. With a new depot building and storage shelter completed, the Society has also commenced restoring a growing fleet of heritage railway wagons. Regular work days are held where members work in teams on the three major projects as well as other work that is undertaken around the station site.
The Society has hosted a number of passenger excursion trains, opening up the facility to afford an insight to the workings of a country railway station from a bygone era. Paiutua railway station has become unique in New Zealand, as most country stations have now vanished. With a large railway yard, workshop buildings and historic goods shed, the area serves as a reminder of what was once a busy and prosperous part in the everyday lives of New Zealanders. Travel to the Wairarapa from Wellington in the early years following the settlement by Europeans in the 1840s could best be described as hazardous. It involved a tortuous ascent up the Rimataka Ranges over a bullet track roughly hewn into the mountainside. The opening of the Rimataka incline in 1878 brought a comfortable but lengthy option to travellers. A locomotive hauled rail trip from Wellington to Masterton took an average three hours and 40 minutes, and this was the norm until September 1936. At this time, new 49-seater Rapper class rail cars were introduced between Wellington and Masterton. A distinctive feature of these rail cars was the large wheels on the rear axle which were necessary for the final drive unit and for the axle itself to clear the centre rail of the incline. To accommodate the motor beneath the passenger compartment, the floor was over four feet above rail level, roughly one foot more than normal for other vehicles in NZR passenger fleets. Like all New Zealand rail cars, they were classified RM, an abbreviation for rail motor. They were numbered from four to nine inclusive and also carried the names of Maori canoes of ancient times. Because of their greater speed, compared with the locomotive hauled passenger services in the Wairarapa, the class became colloquially known as Tin Heads. In 1940, a part parcels unit in the same pattern, RM10, named Aroa, was also built for use on the Wairarapa service. This rail car only lasted about 10 years before being scrapped for parts for the rest of the class. In service, they covered big mileages, as there was virtually no spare car in later years, when the timetable was fully developed and the last of the Wairarapa mail trains was withdrawn. Substantial quantities of mail and parcel traffic were also carried, as in those days, the rail cars were the equivalent of today's courier services. RM5, known as Mahu, was saved from being scrapped by the Silver Stream Railway Museum, who have leased it to the Paiutua Railcar Society on a long-term basis. In September 1992, RM5 was transported by road to Paiutua, where restoration has begun. On the 30th of June 2001, a second rail car, standard class RM31 Dokomaru, arrived at Paiutua behind a transrail locomotive, so doubling the size of the Paiutua fleet. It was designed by RJ Gard and construction was commenced in 1938 by the engineering staff at the Woburn workshops in Lower Hutt. Driving cabs were provided at both ends and in 1945, modifications were completed for multiple unit operation. 
Whereas the wire wrapper rail cars were a special purpose design for the unique needs and conditions of a Rimataka incline, they were looked upon as a new standard design, offering higher speed and greater comfort. They were streamlined in the typical style of the 1930s, following recognized and contemporary European trends. The standard rail cars were renowned for their comfort and reliability and were always popular with the travelling public. Originally, they were all painted in a distinctive silver with a broad green central flash, but were progressively repainted in the standard NZR red with a grey roof and silver waistline that gave them all their distinctive looks. After literally millions of miles of satisfactory service over their 33-year lives, they were all retired at the end of 1972. The events that led up to the entry into the service of the twin set rail cars make rather a convoluted tale. An order was placed early in 1950 with the Drury Car Company of England for 35 articulated twin unit rail cars with a seating capacity for 88 passengers. Ten were to be specially adapted for use over the Rimataka incline and 25 were to be for general service. However, with the rapid construction of the Rimataka tunnel and the delay in building the rail cars, all 35 were built to the same design. The actual construction was contracted out to the Birmingham Railway Carriage and Wagon Company and the Italian firm of Fiat was also involved, providing the diesel engines. They first entered service in March 1955 and were used on provincial routes throughout both islands. In April 1968, Following a suggestion from the Hamilton City Council, one rail car was completely refurbished inside and painted outside with light blue, with violet bands running along the sides for a luxury service between Auckland and Hamilton. The service was not a success due to low patronage, so the rail car was placed on a new daylight Auckland to Wellington service, which proved very popular. Two more rail cars were similarly modified and the service ultimately became known as the Blue Streak. During their heyday, each rail car was running around 70,000 miles per year, carrying thousands of passengers safely to their destinations. There were, however, a number of breakdowns, primarily due to the Fiat engines, and owing to lack of replacement engine parts, all were retired from service by the end of 1978. This was not to be the end of the story, as many of them had their motors removed and were modified to service passenger carriages until around 1984. They were all painted lime green and were affectionately called grass grubs. The articulated twin set rail cars have been assured a place in New Zealand passenger railway history as the vehicles that bridged the gap between steam-hauled provincial expresses and the modern diesel-hauled services. They are affectionately remembered by many of the passengers who travelled in them and our unit will be a welcome addition to New Zealand's preserved heritage fleet when its restoration has been completed. Thank you.